Hi, sixth grade. Welcome to your hurricanes lesson. Chapter 11, pages 136 through 137, and let's go. So, slide two, how do they form? Part one. There's three main stages to how hurricanes form. And the first one is starting with thunderstorms over water, mainly the ocean. So all these thunderstorms can be existing over the ocean. And if they all start coming together, they'll form a larger system. If the winds in these storms in the system start traveling in opposite directions, the whole storm will start to spin and give the system that iconic shape that we associate with hurricanes, that sort of spiraled circle. Once the winds hit 37 to 61 kilometers per hour, it's upgraded to a tropical depression. It's called a depression because the air pressure in the system is very, very low. So that's part one. It goes from just some thunderstorms to a tropical depression. Part two is where the tropical depression starts increasing in size and strength, and it'll eventually be classified as a tropical storm. These are where the storms start getting their name, and meteorologists start collecting more info. They'll collect info about um, size, intensity, wind speed, rainfall, anything that can be associated with a storm. Tropical storms max out their winds from 62 to 118 kilometers per hour. So that's part two. Their tropical depression into a tropical storm. Now part three, how they form, is the air pressure continues to rapidly drop in the system. The temperatures, moistures, and winds increase exponentially. If the winds get over that 118 mark into 119 kilometers per hour sustained, it is then upgraded to a tropical cyclone. That's the scientific term for hurricane or typhoon. Um, they are ranked one through five. So you might have heard category two hurricane or back in 2005, the hurricane that devastated New Orleans and Louisiana was Hurricane Katrina. It was a category five hurricane. So it had winds that were over 157 miles per hour. The categories go from one up to five. One is the weakest, five is the strongest, and one is still pretty strong, and it can cause a lot of damage. Um, hurricanes are affected by water currents and the Coriolis effect. So in the northern hemisphere, they turn counterclockwise, and in the southern hemisphere, they turn clockwise. So let's move on to slide five. It's titled Hurricanes, Typhoons, and Willy Willies because depending on where you are in the world depends on the name. Um, it all depends on where it starts out. And they're called hurricanes where we are. We call them all hurricanes. Hurricanes start in the Atlantic Ocean and the Eastern Pacific Ocean. In the Western Pacific, they're called typhoons. And interestingly enough, down near Australia, they are called willy willies. I need to make up the name. Um, so regardless of what their name is, they are characterized by heavy, heavy rainfall, violent winds, again, they can get up to 157 miles per hour or more, and a storm surge. So if you ever watched the weather while hurricanes were going on, they've always talked about the storm surge being extremely dangerous because what storm surge is, is a wall of water that moves ashore when the hurricane strikes land. So you could hear about storm surge during a regular storm. It's not going to be very much, but during a hurricane, it can be multiple feet. It could be, depending on the strength of the storm, really, really far. In the Hurricane Katrina, the storm surge broke the levees, and because New Orleans is below sea level, New Orleans was underwater. So storm surge can be potentially more dangerous than the winds, if the winds aren't as strong, but the water gets stirred up enough and just moves completely ashore. Imagine if there was a storm that was strong enough to make one of the islands here be covered in water. It can be really devastating. So if you move on to slide six, you'll see the structure of a hurricane. It's pretty simple. In the center is that little circle you always see. It's called the eye. And interestingly enough, in the eye of a hurricane, 
it's calm. There's nothing going on. Everything outward from that is crazy. There's winds, there's rain, there can be lightning, there can be thunder. Um, but so you have the eye is that center of where there's nothing. It's just straight up to the sky. And the eye wall is what forms that little circle. And you go out, everything that's around that is called a, ra a rain band. These outer bands are made of cumulonimbus clouds and it gets weaker as you move out into the storm. So the strongest winds are closest to the eye and then as you move out into the, the rest of the uh, radius of the storm, it gets weaker. As a hurricane moves away from its source of moisture and warmth, it loses its strength. They need water to actually keep going and form. So the hurricane forms out in the water and it starts moving towards the coast of somewhere. As it moves away from that starting point, it's going to become weaker. And once it makes landfall, it will become the weakest it's been because it has nothing to draw from. So if you look at slide seven, it has your homework on it. Just go ahead and look up those four um, tropical cyclones that I put there and tell me when they happened, where it made its landfall or where it hits land and what strength it was. Your options are, well not options, your questions are Hurricane Florence, Typhoon Amy, Hurricane Mitch, and Typhoon Mankut. And have a good day.